Yeah, and, and just because the image looks like there's some degeneration or damage, that doesn't mean that the symptoms have to be normal or that doesn't have to be your norm. There's yeah. always things that we can do that are under our own control that might help improve that feeling of stability. Welcome back everyone to another PT Pearl from the Optimal Body Podcast. I'm Dr. Dom. I'm Doc Jen. And today we're gonna to be talking about your shoulder labrum. You might hear about labral tears or slap tears. We're gonna go through what they are, why they matter, and what you can do about them. All right, before we dive in on everything labrum related, I wanna ask a huge favor of you, hit that subscribe bell down below, hit the notification bell, because that is the best way to stay updated on when we come out with new PT Pearls and when Jen comes out with her videos on movement, pain, anything movement related to help keeping your body feeling fresh. All right, let's dive in on labrum stuff. All right, we've gotten some questions about shoulder labrum. This is a pretty popular one. And honestly, as we go into it and we talk about it a little bit more, maybe something that is more common than you think and more natural. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a natural degeneration that like we're noticing with a lot of these orthopedic issues. There's a lot of people out there that are probably living with some sort of deficiency in their labrum. They might just not know. They might be not having symptoms yet. Mm -hmm. And so some people are shocked when they find out, oh, I've got a tear in my labrum and now I'm having all this pain. What do I do? It might be something you lived with for a significant amount of time before actually having symptoms. Right, exactly. So we're going to explain exactly what the shoulder labrum is, help break it down like in your mindset to kind of wrap around what the heck is this thing? What do symptoms usually feel like? How do you mm -hmm. kind of test for it? And then we'll take you through some of the treatments and stuff. And I think talk about our own journeys. If you think about it, particularly in our shoulder, I mean, at least in our hip, we stand on our on our legs, right? Yeah. And so we have that natural kind of stability from the lower part to hold it in. But for the shoulder, because our arms just dangle, we don't have anything underneath to kind of help hold it in. So all these ligaments that kind of attach around this area help to come into this labrum area and hold that ball and socket a little bit more secure. And I think that's a great point that you bring up about how the hip is a lot different where we almost have constant pressure mm -hmm. on the labrum of our hip and just on the hip joint in general, where in our arms, this injury comes a lot more from the traction or injuries that will cause us to put a lot more tension or pulling on our arm. So mm -hmm. the labrum in the shoulder faces a lot different challenges than the, the labrum in the hip does. Yeah, and it's all based on movement. Yeah. You know, what are we doing through movement? And so a lot of times what this starts to feel like, I mean, one, shoulder pain, you might get shoulder pain in general, usually more at like the front area. Front top type area. Yeah, you might feel a lot of shoulder instability. So you might feel like, you move your arm in different ways and it feels like it's almost gonna come out of its socket. You might get that catching, locking sensation when you're moving it through different areas. Yeah, and this can be caused, there's like a couple different mechanisms of how it can be caused. It's one, a traumatic injury, mm -hmm. and you'll often see it coinciding with other injuries. Like if mm -hmm. you dislocate your shoulder, you might also disrupt your labrum. Yeah. Because it's just a traumatic injury and anytime we're going to wrench that ball kind of out of the socket in a dislocation, you might affect that labrum a little bit. Same with biceps. Like if, if you see a biceps injury, a lot of the times there might be concurrently a labral issue because the long head of our biceps, and we're going to talk about this a little bit more, mm -hmm. attaches right at the top of that labrum. And there's two types of tears that we really typically see with these kinds of injuries and one being a slap tear. So a lot of people, this is probably the most common. Do you know what slap stands for? Superior labrum to anterior to posterior. Anyways, <laughs> all that means is the top portion. So superior is the top. Yep. labrum we're talking about the rim there right and then anterior to posterior so that means the front of that area to the back of that area and there's different degrees to which this injury happens and they call it anywhere from type one to type four but a lot of times this is like dom said particularly this type of tear goes hand in hand with that long head of the bicep so with our biceps which most people know right that's at the top the front of that arm we kind of make that Popeye kind of bicep there, right? And we have different tendons. So there's a short head that doesn't quite go as long. And then there's a long head of the tendon that goes in and crosses over that shoulder joint there. And so when we get into that slap tear, a lot of times we're getting into that pulling of that long head as well. As and these well. slap lesions you'll often see when you have high velocity or mm -hmm. quick movements overhead. So we see this often in 
athletes, um, yeah. baseball, tennis, anyone who's doing a lot of throwing or overhead motions. And again, because when you go through that, you're putting a ton of tension through that biceps, which is going to pull really hard where it anchors in right at the top of that glenoid fossa mm -hmm. or right at the top area of where that glenoid labrum is. Right, exactly. It could also happen traumatically. So if you are falling with like an outstretched arm and you kind of get that stretching, that tension that happens right at that top front portion of the tissue there. There's four types. A type one is just like slight degeneration. You might be starting to see some pulling away of that labrum at the top where the biceps attaches all the way to that four where mm -hmm. both the long head of the biceps and the labrum are more or less fully detached. And that's where you're going to start seeing a lot more of that locking, clicking, grinding sound, more significant instability. Let's talk about bank cart tears a little yep. bit. And those are more common in the younger population, especially with shoulder dislocation. So you probably want us to get to the good part, right? Of what do you do? What do you, what, what, <laughs> what kind of treatment is, is there hope for you, right? Because maybe yeah. you've been diagnosed with this in the past. Now, there are tests that we can do. Obviously, if it gets to a certain point, you want to do an image. You want to see type 1 to type 4, right? Yeah, how what bad, are we looking at? How bad is this thing? Do we need surgery? Surgery? We're not against surgery. If you need surgery, you definitely need to help yeah. stabilize that those tissues down. However, there's different degrees and you can go into a physical therapist and there's a variety of tests that we can perform as physical therapists to kind of see what is happening in that shoulder and start to make a very good educated guess that this could be a you know a slap or a bank art or at least something happening with the labrum some of the most popular mm -hmm. ones called the relocation test where a pt would bring you up into abduction so they'd bring your arm out and then they would externally rotate your arm and that's going to cause you to feel some of that instability especially on the front side of the shoulder and then what the PT might do is put some pressure on the front of the shoulder to like give you an artificial stability and then if the symptoms go away then we might be thinking something labrum related. Another one that's really quick is just and you can even do this yourself is load the bicep so kind of push down on your hand to load that biceps tendon and if you start getting pain or symptoms up in the top part of that shoulder again we might think okay superior labrum or something biceps related. Yeah, but that could also be biceps related, right? So this is going to be more specific for a physical therapist to take you through. And all we're looking for are that positive symptoms of that same kind of pain that you are complaining of. We put you in a position that elicits it. And then we say, OK, based on what we're finding, we're probably leaning more toward labrum or bicep or wherever we might be along the spectrum. And that's where it's important to go see a physical therapist and maybe seeing a physical therapist first, which isn't usually the norm, <laughs> I, yeah. I would say, can be so beneficial because that's your first step in saying, OK, what is the degree here? And a physical therapist is trained to refer you out to get more imaging or more testing if they think it's necessary. As we age, we've talked about this before, changes start to happen on the outside and we always see them and, and we call it normal. Wrinkles happen, it's normal. But we usually don't say that same thing about the inside of the yeah. body. And these degenerative changes, they're normal as well and it's gonna happen. So what are we doing for our body on the inside yeah. to help maintain the best we can as we start to age? Because it's just, it's gonna happen. My mom has shoulder issues. She's complaining about it all the time, but guess what? We're working on it. Yeah, and, and just because the image looks like there's some degeneration or damage, that doesn't mean that the symptoms have to be normal or that doesn't have to be your norm. There's always yeah. things that we can do that are under our own control that might help improve that feeling of stability. Again, with the overhead movements, I think a lot of it comes from movement patterns that might just not be quite the most optimal for us. Right. Or, or we're, we're working overhead in a way that is not as supported by some of our scapular stabilizers and some of like our rotator cuff can become super important because mm -hmm. the rotator cuff is this beautiful muscle that was built these four smaller muscles but it really helps to center and stabilize that ball in the socket when we're talking about having pain and external rotation well we're gonna have to restore that external rotation movement and a lot of times you might see in physical therapy offices like having that stick or a pvc pipe and yeah. kind of like push and open into external rotation as tolerated. Obviously, we don't want to push into a range that we don't feel good about. But you can also even start like with a towel kind of between your arm and your body and holding. And then maybe you're putting your, your hand behind a doorway and you're just kind of slowly starting to open up and put that range of motion and that stretching mobility onto your joint as tolerated. Yeah, and that's one of the first places we start is can we restore some of that passive range with minimizing symptoms? And, and a great way to kind of 
focus on minimizing symptoms is as you're doing the passive range, focus on what your shoulder blades are doing. Mm -hmm. As you go into a certain range, is your shoulder blade wanting to compensate because it's trying to guard? If so, kind of keep those shoulder blades nice and pinched down and back without, you know, flaring your rib cage forward, but go into that range of motion and see, can I keep my shoulder blade stabilized? And then once we get passive range of motion, then we move into some active range of motion. Mm -hmm. So if it's just like Jen said, pinching something underneath your armpit or acting like you're pinching something under your armpit and then just going out into like a bilateral external rotation, seeing how far you can get. Jen gets about two or three times as far as I do, but <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like straining to get there. <laughs> That's on YouTube. You got to watch that. Yeah, one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so once we restore kind of that active range of motion as tolerated and not just right with our elbows right at our side, but can we do it out in different ranges of motion with our arms starting to come away from our body more in that abduction kind of positioning. Yeah, kind of that test that they do. They bring yeah. your arm in. It's almost like making the goalpost. So if you can get against the wall and start doing the active external rotation up against the wall. Or even laying down allowing gravity to kind of help out. Laying part. down. Laying down and having your back against the floor or leaning against a wall, it can really give you that sense of stability mm -hmm. because there's something supporting you, the floor or the wall behind your back. Right. <laughs> and then we do want to start to add some load, add some tension. So you can grab one of the therapy loops or one of the bands in the optimal body therapy kit <laughs> we'll have that link down uh, yeah. <laughs> um, but but kind of holding on and you want your thumbs kind of pointing outward because that puts you in more of that external rotation position but it also starts to activate those that rotator cuff kind of naturally because rather than having your hands kind of palms down and then trying to pull out usually we get into like more of a rounded shoulder position yeah. but if i turn my palms naturally up it kind of opens up my shoulders and engages that rotator cuff in the back of my my shoulder blades to make them already kind of start to work. And then we can work on just holding. So a lot of times just isometric holds is a great place to start. So isometric means that we're not going to do reps. We're just going to go to what I can tolerate and I'm going to hold that position. Or maybe I'm just going to do a single arm you know, those exercises where you have a band in a doorway or on something and you just pull it out and hold. You can walk away from it. You can kind of lift your arm in different positions. But again, just getting that arm to kind of hold against resistance is a great place to start. Yeah. And being that our biceps is, you know, tends to be involved, especially if you're looking more at a slap type lesion, how do we start to reload the biceps so that the muscle itself can take higher amounts of tension, higher yeah. amounts of strain without feeling like it's tugging at that labrum. So doing a biceps isometric hold with a dumbbell or just pushing on your biceps, focusing on doing the eccentric. So bringing a dumbbell up to the top and slowly lowering it down all the way until you get straight. That's something that's going to allow that biceps to develop the ability to handle a lot more tension and then going into more of the concentric motions, doing that kind of concurrently while you're training our rotator cuff and our mm -hmm. external rotation would be great. And when we are getting initial pain kind of in those like slap lesions and stuff, we've actually done an episode on why you don't want to just immediately go to ice and rest and compress, yeah. right? Rice has kind of been taken out. And we've replaced it with something called Peace and Love. And we'll have that episode linked down below, but we definitely think you should take a listen. It's more about getting more movement in in a safe and healthy way, working with the inflammation that our body yeah. naturally develops. We want to protect the shoulder. That's what the P stands for. We, we want to protect it from having more inflammation or from having chronic inflammation. Mm -hmm. But we also want to work with that inflammation because essentially that's healing. That's the body sending everything to the area that it needs to heal. How can we do it in a way that's going to continue to work fluids through that area, but also do the movements that we know that shoulder needs. So as that shoulder heals, it's going to lay down the right fibers. It's going to lay down the right groundwork so that we don't fall back into the same patterns before if we right. just go straight to rest. And then when we're talking about like bank heart lesions and stuff, they're really just you want to focus on strength and mobility and getting that arm nice and strong because it does involve so much of that instability. Yeah. And stabilizing exercises, especially mm -hmm. once you get into the higher level stuff, doing stabilizing exercises above head and in some of those extreme ranges mm -hmm. is super important because we need to return to doing things. So if you're kind of going on the far end of the progression of those external rotation exercises. If you have a band anchored and you kind of have your arm up in that goalpost range where it's kind of at an L or you're making a little L with your arm and kind of 
shaking it back and forth, walking side to side, that's gonna help you really start to develop that stability so your shoulder, your arm feels strong and safe when you go back to working above head or as an athlete, when you go back to throw a ball again. Mm -hmm, exactly, and so hopefully that just helped to give you an idea of when surgery might be indicated, what you could do to start kind of improving that mobility, improving that strength and working with your body as we naturally age. Thanks so much for joining us. I hope you learned a little bit more and have a little bit more information, feel empowered to understand that labrum in your shoulder. We have so many other episodes that we've done on the body like this. So make sure you subscribe and go to those other episodes. And we're gonna have so much more in the future, whether it's episodes talking about different diagnoses again, or just different pain points, how you can improve movement patterns. So get to know your body here at Doc Denfit. Make sure you subscribe, hit that bell so you don't miss out on reminders in the future.